Hello YouTube, welcome back for another episode of our series on March 9th, 2021. The topics of today's series are genetic testing and DNA sequencing, which is involved in the process of genetic testing. Do you know that mutation in someone's genes can cause certain disorders and illnesses? Have you ever wondered what modern science can do to help them? Tune in to learn more about genetic testing, including the different styles, testing methods, advantages, risks, and more. I hope you can gain a better understanding of the science behind this technology, as well as its practical applications. So let's get started. The slide shows you a more in-depth analysis of genetic testing, as well as DNA sequencing, which was a stage of certain genetic tests. We'll start with a quick overview of genetic testing, including what it is, what it can reveal, and the different types of mutations that can occur in the chromosomes, genes, or proteins. We'll then go through the different types of genetic testing, the methods for conducting them, what the findings represent, the advantages, and the risks. So what is genetic testing? Genetic testing looks at a patient's DNA and find changes in the chromosomes, genes, and proteins. So what's the reason for doing that? Well, because the changes may play a role in causing a disease or an illness, and we want to find them, we want to identify them. If you have the following questions or concerns, you might want to get tested genetically. Do you have a suspected genetic condition? If so, the testing can help you to confirm or rule out the condition. Are you worrying about developing or passing on a disease? If so, the testing can help you to, to determine the chance of that happening. It's also important to keep in mind that there are two types of mutations. So when it comes to heredit hereditary mutations, in which the disorder is inherited from a parent, or acquired mutations, where environmental factors such as radiation exposure come into play. If diagnosed with the disease, what are the next steps? So the testing results provide um, very important information regarding the treatment as well as how to prevent the illness. So what can genetic testing reveal? It essentially detects the mutated genes in the patient's body. So if the patient has symptoms of a disease that may be caused by genetic changes, also referred to as mutated genes, the testing can reveal if one has a suspected disease. Um, a good analogy would be that the DNA is the database that gives instructions for one's body. So if one's genes change, the instructions will be interrupted. Something will go wrong, and this results in the occurrence of such diseases. So a great example would be the cystic fibrosis, aka Huntington's disease which can be caused by a bad and ill gene that causes the changes in the DNA of um, the cent central area of the brain. So some results of this disease will be that it, it affects one's movement, mood, and thinking skills. So genetic testing can be identified in one's chromosomes, genes, and proteins. Now we're going to talk about different types of mutations. So first, we have um, when the chromosomes are being mutated. So this is a mutation involving a long segment of DNA. So in this case, things can be out of order, something gets in the wrong spot. So chromosome mutation occurs when there is an error during the crossover in meiosis. So evidently, this is going to affect many genes. There are four types of chromosomal mutations addition, translocation, duplication, and inversion, as this figure shows. So deletion happens when um, a chromosome segment is lost. As you can see over here, the segment from C to F is lost. And translocation is when a segment of chromosomes is transferred to another. So in this case, the segment is transferred here. So duplication is a set when a segment from one chromosome is transferred to another chromosomes that is the same, they're the same. Um, they're also known as homogeneous chromosome. 
So in this case, it gives the second chromosome a duplicate of some genes. So it has A, B, C, D, E. Um, so it gives a duplicate of this section. And inversion. So this is when a segment of chromosome arm is inverted. So as you can see, it's originally from C to F. Um, it's rotated 180 degrees. So now it's from F to C. So those are the four types of chromosome mutations. And the second one will be when the genes are being mutated. So this one in particular refers to the nucleotide sequencing. So where everything, where anything can be substituted by something else. So genetic testing is a testing that looks at the genes to see if we're at risk of genetic diseases. So when the genes are being mutated, it alternates in the DNA sequence. So the DNA sequencing gene is being alternated and the mute, the sequence will be very different from the majority. For example, cystic fibrosis, which we mentioned earlier, um, also known as Huntington's disease, is caused by mutation in someone's genes. So the last case would be the proteins being mutated. Um, in this case, what happens is that the proteins are making the wrong proteins, and you need the you need the right proteins to function properly. This could happen due to a different asset producing the protein. For example, Alzheimer's disease um, are caused by mutation in proteins. Also, mutations can ca be caused by external factors, such as radiations and toxins. As we mentioned earlier, there are two types of mutations. Hereditary mutations, which um, is the disorder that is inherited from a parent, and acquired mutations, where the external factors play a role. So take cancer as an example. Some people are born more at risk for particular types of cancer, but cancer is also caused by an external stimuli. So you can be more at risk at birth, but external factors, factors need to trigger an abnormal reaction and result in the cells not doing what they traditionally do. So now we're going to go over the different types of testing. Different types of genetic testing are done for different reasons. Four types of testing are examined in details. So the first one is diagnostic testing. If a patient has symptoms of a disease that may cause by genetic changes, the testing can reveal if you have the suspected disorder. So an example would be uh, the Huntington's disease that can be detected in a diagnostic testing. So the second one will be the predictive testing. If you have a family history of a genetic condition, getting this test before you have symptoms, it can show you if you're at risk of developing that condition. For example, this type of test may be useful for identifying the risk of certain types of colorectal cancer. So that is the cancer that occurs in the large intestine, as you can see over here in this figure over here. So this third type of testing would be the prenatal testing. If the mother is pregnant, the test can detect some type of defects or abnormalities in the baby's genes. One of the genetic disorders that can be tested is the Down syndrome, which occurs when a baby has three copies of chromosome instead of two in all cells. So in order to detect this, a blood test is performed on the mother to examine the baby's DNA. So the next example provided is one of the most common types of genetic testing, newborn screening. In many countries, such as the US, it is required that newborns be tested for certain genetic irregularities. So this type of testing shows whether the newborn have certain diseases. For example, a newborn has been screened and the result is that it has congenital hypo hypothyroidism, which means that the newborn does not have the ability to make adequate amount of thyroid hormone. So as you can see over here in this figure, um, this is the thyroid gland and this is where the thyroid hormone um, is. So in this case, the care and treatment can be gain right away by giving thyroid hormone meditations to children. This treatment may take a lifetime, but it's always good to know um, 
that the baby has it as early as possible. Depending on the type of test, a sample of your blood, skin, fluid, or other tissue will be collected and sent to a lab for analysis. So before a person has a genetic test, it is very important that he or she understand the testing procedure, the benefits, the limitations of the test. Therefore, it is very important for patients and their families to ask questions about the test results and how the test is performed. The person's medical history, family history are also taken into consideration. So now we're going to look at the procedure of genetic testing. The first step is taking a sample of blood, hair, or skin. So how is it taken? Depending on the type of testing, um, for example, um, the bogus smear is using a brush to collect a sample from the inside of a patient's cheek. Now, the second step, that's where the sample is sent to a laboratory where specific changes in chromosomes, DNA, or proteins are examined. This is also the step where DNA sequencing is involved. Now, the last step, that is when the test results are sent back to a person's doctor or directly to the patient. Now we're going to look at, look at a video that examines the DNA sequencing in great detail. So DNA sequencing is basically the process of figuring out the order of the bases in a strand of DNA. So this is a strand of DNA. Before we can sequence it, it has to be cut into smaller pieces and inserted into the plasmid DNA. And then the whole thing is put into bacteria cells. This makes it possible to produce lots and lots of copies as the bacterial cells multiply. Now, over here, this is where DNA is isolated from the bacteria. And it's transferred into a plate like this where the sequencing reaction will take place. So in the plate, uh, a mixture of ingredients is added. These include the free DNA bases, A, C, G, T, the polymerized enzyme, and the DNA primers. Also, colored terminators bases are also added. And they look like this. So now we're sequencing. So to start the sequencing reaction, everything needs to be heated to 96 degrees Celsius. This helps to separate the DNA into two single strands. Now the temperature is lowered again to 50 degrees, and that helps the DNA primers to connect with the plasmid DNA. So now they connect. Now, as we can see, the temperature is increased to 60 degrees. Um, this helps the enzyme DNA polymerize bind the primer DNAs, which are here. So it helps to bind them. And a terminal base is added. And this means that no other DNA can be added. So once the terminator base is added, um, it stops making DNA and the polymerase falls behind. Now everything's heated to 96 degrees and they separate the strand from the original strand. This process is repeated again and again to produce lots of fragments of DNA of different length. The length is really dependent on when the terminator is added. So they come in different length. So now we need to read the sequence of the DNA, the various uh, fragments, right? Now they need to be separated by length. Now using a process called electrophoresis, a capillary tube is lowered 
um, into each one of the plates, and an electric charge is applied. The DNA molecules, which are negatively charged, they now move through the capillary tube, and the result is that the fragments become arranged by size from the shortest to the longest when they're in the capillary tube. So as the DNA fragments come to the end of the capillary, we see a laser. So this laser over here makes the terminal bases light up. So as we can see over here, the color is green. Each terminator base is labeled with a different color. This green one with the letter A, C for blue, G for yellow, and T is for red. The shortest DNA fragment will be read first, and the longest will be read last. The sequencing machine, now they record the color of the terminator bases, as a series of colored blocks, as you can see over here. So each color represents the color label terminator base. And now by converting the colors into letters, we get a sequence of our piece of DNA. So that was a detailed description of how the DNA sequencing process works. Hopefully, the visual helps. Now we're going to look at the results of a genetic test. So, um, if you have a positive test result, what does that mean? Well, that means the lab has found a change in your gene, chromosome, or protein. So this may result, um, this result may confirm a diagnosis. Um, they might diagnose you as a person who carries a particular gene mutation, or they might identify a risk of developing a disease such as cancer in the future. Or they might suggest the patient to do some further testing. Now, since the family members have some similar genetic material um, as the patient, a positive test result, it may also suggest the relatives of the person to take the testing as well, so that they have more evidence, more information to make further decisions. It is important to know that positive result does not guarantee, um, you know, does not guarantee giving the patient an exact accurate result for, um, for, for example, that you must have the risk of developing a disorder. It's not certain. So, in this case, further tests may be conducted. So, what does a negative result mean? A negative result means that the lab did not find a change in the gene, the chromosome, or the protein they examined. Um, this result can indicate that person is not affected by protein disorder, um, he or she is not a carrier of a specific genetic mutation, or maybe they don't have an increased re risk of developing a certain disease. So this is good news. It is possible, however, that the test has missed some important cues due to the fact that many tests cannot detect all genetic changes. In this case, further testing may be required to confirm a negative result because you always need to be sure, you always need to be certain. Now we're going to look at the benefits of genetic testing. So um, it has many potential benefits. The test results can provide a sense of relief from the uncertainty and help people to make more informed decisions. For example, a patient who gets a negative result, they don't need to do further checks up or screen tests and can provide a sense of relief. A positive result can direct the person towards um, uh, available prevention and treatment options. Some test results can also help people make decisions about having children. So newborn screening can, for example, like newborn screening, can identify the genetic disorder early in life for um, in the babies so that treatment can be started as early as possible. Now the risks. There are many risks associated with genetic testing um, involving the emotional, social, or financial consequences of a test result. Um, people may feel angry, depressed, anxious, or even guilty about their test results. 
In some cases, genetic testing can create tension within a family because you know it can reveal information about other family members. A big factor, one of the、um, big risks, is the possibility of genetic discrimination. So this is a phenomenon where people are treated differently by their employers or insurance companies because, according to their test results. They are more likely to develop a disease, and also genetic test testing can only provide limited information about inherited condition. More procedures and more steps need to be taken in order to make sure. Thank you for watching this presentation.、Um, hopefully, you, you've gained a deeper understanding of genetic testing and DNA sequencing after watching. And here is the references.